Why am I linking these lessons I have learned with prophecy? We need to understand this. That's very well. We began by saying there are certain things you cannot control. There are certain things you won't stop. <laughs> there are certain things you cannot blame others for. Why they happen in your life. There are also certain things you cannot blame yourself for. There is a long list. I could talk with you about it, but I want to keep this video as short as possible and to prepare your mind. I love prophecy so much. Oh yeah, I do. When it is actually backed by the word. And God has given us his word as the yardstick. It is the foundation. It is the stronghold for all activities we do in the kingdom. Anything you hear being done in the body of Christ, in the church, which cannot be backed up by the word. It is purely man's invention. And in effect, it's a religious thing. You see, I love to study and let the word dwell in my heart so richly, even as I teach and admonish one another. I love to give attention to the scripture because it is the word of God that builds men up, even for their work of ministry. Oh yeah, I do. I also love to give attention to the word of God because last I checked, I was told prophecies will fail, healings will fail, and many other things will fail. Yet it is only the word of God that will remain. I also love the word because God exalts it above his name. The word is actually an idea. It has a life principle. It is the word that teaches men, protects men, it gives wisdom, it imparts in your abilities. It is full of preserving grace. The word of God is powerful and when you keep substituting the scriptures, giving attention to the word of God for a word of prophecy, which you want at all cost, chances are that you will get a word of prophecy one day. And that may be explaining exactly why you have created the so many enemies you have right now. If there be one thing you must put in your checklist of things to deal with, to handle, to stop or to do before you get into 2023, it is about your approach to prophecy and the prophetic ministry. Culture is dangerous. You see, the church today has invented so many things. Some of those things among, we call it prophetic dancing, prophetic whatever. I mean, so many things have been invented. I'm not against aspects of church culture. Culture is an aspect of tradition. Tradition is actually simply means to trade off an idea. Okay. Tradition becomes a problem when it begins to take the place of God's word. When men begin to value tradition handed down to them by the spiritual fathers or church elders more than the word of God, it becomes a problem. This is exactly why in Mark 7, 7 forward, Jesus had to rebuke sternly his opponents, the adversaries of his time. Talking about the Pharisees and the religious church people, which today reflects who they are. When tradition, what do you do? We are Baptist, we are Catholic, we are Methodist, we are Anglican, we are this and that. This is the way we do things. We don't pray like this. We can't pray without the rosary. When you put all these traditions and it become more of value to you than the word of God, <clears throat> you will sooner than later crash. Satan will not care how much you are misled by prophecies, how much you are misled into practicing tradition at the detriment of the word. He won't care how much all of this is taking place. This is why many actually are carried into it satan's greatest threat is the word of the kingdom you see when it is sown in you you receive it and you understand it when you apply it guaranteed the results will happen as it is declared so there be one thing if there be one thing that the church needs every day and to teach people to help men understand is the word Jeremiah 3 verse 15 says, I have given you pastors after my heart. They shall instruct you in understanding. They shall teach you the word. Imagine, they shall give you knowledge through the word. You see, verse 17 of it guarantees there will be prosperity when that happens. Also, the scripture says we should give attention to the word every day. In it, our profiting, our profiting, excuse me, our profiting shall appear unto all men. So the word has a profiting ability. When discipline is not there to study the word, men make mistakes, people go through problems, they make errors. Jesus says, you err because you know not the scriptures. I have learned lessons in life and I've come to conclude that there is only one thing surely as the word says that stands. All others you hear will fail. You will be disappointed. Uh, part one already shared a few. Let me show you one of those lessons that I have learned in life. And I pray you get this with an open heart. I'm not attacking you. I'm not challenging you. I'm not insulting you. I'm not challenging your ministry. I'm not challenging your Christians. I'm not challenging you. I'm not challenging you, your church either. 
I just simply want us to reason out things by wisdom through the word. One of those lessons I have learned in life is this. You will never, can never, will never ever get answers to certain things you're looking for. Nobody will never give you any explanation. So settle it now. This is important for you to understand because when we ask too many whys, we end up with invented answers from men. This is the basis for this misleading going on around in the name of waiting for a word of prophecy. You can visit all churches you care, go to all the men of God you care, spend money as you want, lodge in hotels as you want. If you will not give attention to the word of God as it says, and do exactly as it has said, you will not have the results you desire, except you will choose to compromise your moral standards and manufacture these results yourself. See, oftentimes we go through things in life that cause problems, and we end up with so many questions. Why did my husband die? Why did this happen? Etc., etc. Why? You see, because of this quest to have answers to what is happening, some groups of people or some group of people have decided to invent those answers. Uh, let me just throw this point right to you. If you're listening, child of God with an open heart, church work is not Ngambe work, in quote. It is not a ritualistic thing we do. Church work, kingdom work, understand this, is our relationship with God through his word. Growing in intimacy with him, getting to understand what the word of the king says, aligning with it. I have seen magicians infiltrate the church. They think church work is some magic. You just call a man of God right now, he just do some magic. Oftentimes, many have separated from me, and I've already referenced this in other videos I've made, and I'm okay with it, simply because when they wrote to me, or they got in contact with me, they thought I'm going to do some magic, and answers will just come to them. I, am, I will tell them in all honesty, I know my limits. I will never invent an answer and give you as to why your life is the way you are, why men are rejecting you, etc., etc. I will never. If I understand by reason of your background, I will tell you in all honesty where you fail. Maybe where the family is doing something wrong or a member, and probably why this has caused maybe certain aspects of patterns of sin or problems to infiltrate the family. And through the word, we see a solution out of it. But if you think I'm going to invent things, for instance, and tell you so that we do accusations and counter accusation, it is not this man talking here. I don't do it. I've never done it. There are many of you, a few who have been exposed to me, probably not you. You know, you detach probably from me because of that. That's okay. Whenever you want to get certain answers to things that God never wanted answers given to, because his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. It is written, the secret of the Lord belongs to him. He chooses to reveal to men exactly as he wants. As he wants. When you don't get answers from God and you want answers desperately, for example, why your daughter had to die the way they died, why your husband had to die the way they died, why you had to lose his mind, etc., etc., men will give you answers. And when men give you answers, check this. If the answers, the responses you have been given in the name of prophecy, in the name of prophetic word, in the name of being located and given a prophetic word. Rem again, remember this, please. This is a disclaimer so you don't misunderstand me if you are getting the video at this level. I don't hate prophets. I don't hate prophecies. I respect their place. That's their office. I also have my office of administration, purely teaching, ministering other aspects of this kingdom word, which is priority because the foundation for all ministry work is the word of God. When the word is absent, men do religion. Men replace church activity with cultural issues. When the word is absent, men invent things they are imagining and replace the word with these things. I teach the word. I practice the word. I peace the church, the Commonwealth Assembly of God Church, the Kingdom Church of God Church. We strictly rely on the word. The words of God as captured in the Bible. For our faith and practice, all manner of our faith and practice. I may be patient with it. Many will not like it. Well, I will not invent prophecies. Let's go back to that lesson I said I have learned. This is the lesson. You cannot always invent an answer for things that have no answers. Settle it now. 
listen, child of God, if you will stop running up and down looking for prophetic answers and settle down and follow directives and instructions you've been given through the word, especially by seasoned ministers God has given you right there which you have been abusing and probably mocking the grace of God walking on them, including your pastor next to you, you'll be blessed a lot. Do you know why many today have created more enemies in the body of Christ? Do you also know why many families have been torn apart today? Etc. etc. It is because men want to hear a prophetic word. Imagine one day I'm back from work, hear this scenario, called by a colleague to come attend to a patient. So I went over to do an ultrasound scan. A lady came in, had an issue that needed to be sorted out. I did a scan for her. All right. She's not pregnant. She thought she was. Okay, a uterine myoma has been detected. Good ultrasound scan report as per professional standard documented. This woman somehow maybe had God news. I'm actually a minister of God. So she said something funny. Let me just get it there. Imagine going to someone to get answers as to why up to now you have never been able to conceive. And this someone tells you this that you have actually a spiritual worm in your womb. What is a spiritual worm? <laughs> Imagine hearing that kind of a thing. You know that opens up to the next set of problems because you want not to research to know what a spiritual worm is. Exactly, this is why I'm saying there are certain things you don't want to invent answers. When you cannot understand why certain things happen the way they happen, you try to inquire and you couldn't get any satisfactory answer from nobody, stay quiet. Behind so much of the prophetic movement we see today is actually men inventing answers. Another case of a lady I've cancelled, and uh, this is something she was coming to in to report actually. It was a trick the devil wanted to actually pull him to in the name of prophecy. She laughed at it to scorn because the word protected her. It is what gives men wisdom, the word, in you. And the Holy Spirit can only bring to your remembrance the word of God you've heard. So if you got born again, got the Holy Spirit, and have refused to learn the word of God, there is nothing the Holy Spirit has to bring to your remembrance. That's scripture. God cannot break his word. Get to understand this so that men will not take you astray. Now, <laughs> this lady has a man writing to him on WhatsApp talking about introducing himself as a prophet or one ministry, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this man had probably gone intelligence about some issues in her life through uh, another loved one. And now hear what this, this prophet of a man says. She, she says, um, to solve this problem, this lady needs to <laughs> buy seven chairs for the church so that they write the names of the family members that are having issues and be sitting on it and praying. So I asked the lady, now after they are done praying and the problem is solved, what becomes of the chairs that their names are written on? You see, it's, it's pure scamming. If this woman was desperate for a prophetic word, she would be misled. I buy a chair and give you so that you fill up your church with chairs now. So if you needed someone to support church project, why don't you just give a list in all honesty? Look, uh, we have needs in this church. Can you be of help to us? People would like to support kingdom work. Many do, really, many do. Why trick people in the name of prophecy? This is dangerous and I want you to guard against this. Others have done their terrible stories. When you refuse to learn the word of God, Men will invent answers and give you. If you had learned the word, according to the words of Jesus, he says, we err, we make mistakes, we go into errors because we know not the scriptures. When you also look at Isaiah 5, 13, my people are going into captivity because they know not the word. Hosea 4, verse 6, it says, my people perish for their lack of knowledge. In fact, verse 7 even says this, because they are rejected knowledge, I will reject them and also their children. Can I suppose something to you? You only reject what you know exists. Think about that, Sila. So you, we need to understand these things so that we stay clear. You cannot get into 2023 and be misled again by what we call prophecies. Many of these fake prophets, as they've come on board, they have actually wasted genuine prophetic ministries and made men now to begin thinking all prophets are the same. Just like many things, all pastors are the same. Just like many things, all teachers of the word are the same. I am called to teach the word. That's my job. And if it would take patience two hours to examine a scripture, ask relevant questions, understand historical background, and look at the present hour application to give you a prophetic word, I will have to do it. I am never in a haste. I'm not anxious. And I have learned through life that there are certain things you cannot give answers to. 
What's my point? The scripture says, the secret things or the counsel, no, there is nothing, rather, I'm quoting, there is nothing in Proverbs that can prevail against the counsel of the Lord. When certain things have happened and you don't have answers for them, don't invent. If you cannot get answers, stop visiting men of God. Stop visiting people to look for many answers. If you keep doing it according to Isaiah 30, you may end up going down to Egypt, asking from Pharaoh and his magicians answers to problems and adding sin to sin. The complications are dangerous. Stay on the word of God. Listen to what it says. Do it as it says. You will prosper. The commandments of the Lord, the Bible says, they are right. They always rejoice the heart. They make men righteous. They make men intelligent. They make men wiser, even than their teachers. The word of God is powerful. That is something you want to have all the time. If this will be done, family division will end because of prophetic words. Be careful. When men start pointing fingers at people you know nothing about and claiming these are the people responsible for your problems, watch out. Watch out and guard against these things. These life lessons, I pray they bless you. Things you can never change in your life. Things will keep changing in your life. Things you will never stop. Things you can't blame yourself for. Others that you cannot blame people for. And much more, there are others you can never get answers to. These are life lessons. If you understand this, you will not be misled by so-called prophetic word. And by the way, settle down with the word of God. Stop jumping up and down looking for a miracle now, now. Some of you right now are speaking, there are issues in your life you know you caused them. If you were honest enough to repent and to follow through normal processes of reconciliation, and which may demand that you do some restitution, you will be free from all the problems. It is written, and I quote the word for you, Matthew 5, in the, that greatest act, that greatest public servant of the man that Jesus did. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Peacemakers. Sometimes we need to make peace and certain issues plaguing our lives will cease. Apply this word you will not regret. I bless you and uh, expect total transformation. Stay on our page if you would. Recommend to others if you would. You will hear things and read through things that will totally change your mind. The scripture has power to empower, power to cause profit, power to transform, power to heal, power to restore, power to give you insights. God can instruct you even through his word. It is your assurance now prophecy. God bless you so much. Apply these things and stop looking for answers over things or for things that do not need answers. Let things be the way they are. May God bless you. Certain things must remain like that. May God bless you so much. I look forward to seeing you in 2023. The Lord will keep you right there. Let culture not infiltrate you and destroy and replace the word of God. May God bless you so much. My name is Nchanje. Okay, Kenneth, PCG Church in Bermuda. God bless you.